All right, this week in AI, the first study published about generative engine optimization, Elon Musk sues OpenAI due to the company's nonprofit origins, Figure AI humanoid robots secure partnership with BMW and obtain 700 million in funding from major corporations, and Anthropic launches the Claude 3 family. Hello and welcome back to the AI Almanac, which is a once weekly briefing of the top AI advancements or finds for the week. My name is Veronica Hylak. I am a startup owner and an AI consultant for corporations and US state governments. Although I will admit that no one actually knows what they're doing. Google themselves will tell you that. We're all trying to figure it out. So if anyone is acting like an expert right now, that means they're better than the entire Google staff and I would run. Like, I'm serious, run as far as you possibly can go. The theme for this week is So Yesterday, Generative Engine Optimization is rewriting the search game rules in the AI era, and that's where we'll start today. So advancement number one, introducing Generative Engine Optimization, also known as GEO, the SEO replacement in the era of AI-powered searches. So a few months ago, I had an interview with Multilingual Magazine, which covered a award I won for AI innovation. And I was asked to state what I thought would be a potential significant disruptor because of generative AI. I stated that I believed it would be an area of SEO and international marketing strategy because how we obtain information in the era of AI will significantly change. This week, I came across a study by researchers at Princeton and MIT that confirmed the shift in searching for information, and they introduced a new term for optimizing search results in the era of AI, generative engine optimization, also known as GEO. Because this is the first study of its kind, I read all 20 pages, so you don't have to. This is gonna be a little bit more technical than my normal sections, and if you don't wanna understand how it works, the biggest takeaway is that the most utilized SEO technique of keyword stuffing actually proved detrimental in GEO by 10%. So it marks a serious shift from traditional SEO techniques. For the rest of you that want to understand how GEO works, I'm gonna cover it in a few wee little chapters. Strong Influence Scotland has over me just came out. But we're going to explain what are generative engines, the difference between GEO and SEO, utilizing GeoBench and the two metrics used to measure performance, and the techniques evaluated slash the results. The blog post goes a lot deeper into this, so if you want the specifics, please go read it, or maybe no one has time for it. That's also fine. So what are generative engines? A generative engine is a type of AI technology that synthesizes information from multiple sources to generate a personalized response. So unlike traditional search engines, which just retrieve and rank existing content through mainly links, generative engines use LLMs to understand and compile data into coherent and contextually relevant answers. So examples of a generative engine include perplexity.ai, Google AI search, and even ChatGPT to a degree. Traditional search engines index and retrieve existing web content and they rank it based on relevance and strength over other sources to present a list of links. You still have to go digging through those links though and information to determine what is relevant to you. So the way that generative engines work is it takes a user query or a question, leverages any personal information it may have such as preferences or even history, and then integrates it with a search engine to find the relevant documents, ultimately synthesizing these findings into one singular language response. In the form of an equation, the algorithm of a generative engine, according to the study, it looks kind of like this. So the generative engine takes a user query, times it by the personalized user information to generate a natural language response, which is R in this case. What's the difference between GEO and SEO? The main thing is how users obtain information is significantly different in both approaches. So SEO optimizes content to rank higher on SERPs, which are search engine result pages, using techniques like keyword optimization, backlinks, and site accessibility. GEO, on the other hand, optimizes content for visibility with an AI-driven generative engine. So for GEO, the focus is on the content structure and strategic modification of the source text to align within each engine's content generation patterns. Because of this, traditional SEO techniques are not able to be applied to optimize results within a generative engine environment, which makes sense. 
But if GEO is a new term here, how can you possibly measure the improvement or success of GEO? Because going back to the beginning, no one really knows how all of this works. This study came up with the first benchmark to measure GEO called GEO Bench. And I'm a little skeptical of it, of course, it's the first of its kind, so any progress is good progress. But they took 10,000 queries across dozens of different domains, utilizing many different kinds of data sets, I believe seven different data sets, to test GEO strategies. The specifics of those data sets are in the blog post, so refer to that if you're interested in the technical aspects here. After this new benchmark for measuring GEO was established, they utilized two main metrics for optimizing content visibility within AI-generated environment responses. The first was position adjusted word count, which assessed the original source's impact on the response, considering the amount of content used and the position of the response. So if it was first, second, third, etc. And the second was subjective impression, which was the perceived value of the content, mainly in relation to the relevance of the query. So the results. They evaluated nine different techniques, some traditional SEO techniques, some newer techniques, and the research identified that citing sources, adding quotes, and adding statistics were the leading strategies for improving GEO, increasing metrics by up to 30 to 40% in comparison to the baseline. So what this tells us is that these approaches, which focus on enhancing the content credibility and richness with minimal alterations to the original sources, were found to outperform all other techniques significantly. Stylistic improvements like fluency optimization and easy to understand language, so basically changing the, the paragraphs to be more of a narrative, significantly also increased visibility, underscoring the value that generative engines place not only on the content, but its presentation in the form of ease of reading. Surprisingly, authoritative tone showed no notable benefit other than in areas of historical debate. So it highlighted that generative engines were able to navigate personal biases pretty well. The biggest takeaway from this study though, in my opinion, is contrary to traditional SEO practices, keyword stuffing proved extremely detrimental, often reducing visibility by 10%. So it suggests a pivot from conventional SEO strategies to those prioritizing content credibility. My initial thoughts, this is the first study introducing GEO and a way to quantify results. So while this research still marks a significant shift in how information is going to be retrieved in the future, SEO experts are a bit skeptical about how foolproof this study is. So take everything that is being said with a grain of salt. Advancement number two, Elon Musk sues OpenAI due to company's nonprofit origins. Elon Musk has initiated a lawsuit against OpenAI, including CEO Sam Altman and other associated figures, for allegedly breaking the foundational agreement of keeping the organization a nonprofit dedicated to advancing AI for the betterment of humanity. Musk, a co founder and initial major financer of OpenAI, contributed over $44 million to the organization from 2016 to 2020 under the belief that it would operate as a nonprofit in order to advance AI for public good and counterbalance Google's dominance. In his legal filing, Musk states that OpenAI has significantly deviated from the core objectives that guided his initial investments. He argues that despite OpenAI's original commitment to openly share AI advancements with the world, it has since become one of the most clandestine organizations organizations focused on profit maximization. This shift towards prioritizing profits became significantly more pronounced after OpenAI's partnership with Microsoft, which has made considerable investments in the company. The lawsuit suggests that OpenAI functions as a significant arm of Microsoft, directing its efforts on refining its advanced general intelligence technology to raise Microsoft profits rather than for the betterment of humanity. Microsoft's influence over OpenAI was further displayed by comments in a recent interview by CEO Satya Nadella. Nadella hinted at Microsoft's comprehensive access to OpenAI's intellectual property and resources. Quote, if OpenAI disappeared tomorrow, we have all the IP rights and all the capability. We have the people, we have the compute, we have the data, we have everything. Kind of scary.
Microsoft might have a little bit more power than we thought. While Musk has been continuously offered a stake in the for-profit arm of the startup, he has refused to accept it over principles. Musk seeks to realign OpenAI with its original humanitarian-focused mission, emphasizing the need to prevent the commercialization of its technologies to the exclusive benefit of corporate entities like Microsoft. My initial thoughts, when I first saw that Elon Musk was suing OpenAI, I rolled my eyes and thought this was just a publicity stunt. But I changed my mind the more I read into it. The lawsuit Elon Musk has brought against OpenAI really does seem to have a solid foundation, pointing out significant deviations from the company's original mission that could put the protection of humanity in jeopardy. A mission that's still active on the OpenAI website, by the way. So they are still saying that they are operating for the protection of humanity, but Musk is saying that they seem to be prioritizing profits over that. I think Musk is motivated, at least in part, with a desire to temper OpenAI's progress. Despite my reservations on Musk's motivation, I am inclined to think that his initial investments were aimed at leveling the playing field for the betterment of humanity against these tech giants. If I had invested $44 million and dedicated years on the board of an AI nonprofit organization, only to watch it essentially turn into an arm of one of the major corporations in the world, I too would see substantial grounds for a lawsuit. It appears that OpenAI used nonprofit contributions to make major advancements in AI technology, only to then hand these innovations over to one of the very big industry giants that they aimed initially to protect humanity against. So, yeah, I think Musk has some credibility here. Advancement number three, Figure AI secures significant investment for humanoid robots amid BMW partnership. Figure AI, a humanoid robot startup, recently secured a significant investment of $675 million from major tech entities and investors, including Jeff Bezos, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Intel, and Explore Investments. The investment spree followed the company's announcement of a partnership with BMW to introduce humanoid robots into manufacturing roles, highlighting the industry's recognition of potential for humanoid robots to address labor shortage strategies and enhance safety in manufacturing. As part of the deal on Thursday, Figure also stated that it is partnering with OpenAI and using Microsoft's Azure Cloud Services for AI infrastructure, training, and storage. There's that Microsoft word again. Figure AI has taken significant leaps in robotics with the development of their general purpose robot, Figure 01, designed to emulate human appearance and movements. They are also making it very clear that Figure AI is not intended to be used for military or defense purposes. I'm totally sure, just like OpenAI as a nonprofit organization, has no intention to ever shift their goals. I'm sure Figure AI has no intention of reevaluating that. Just like OpenAI said that the, for the protection of humanity, Figure AI definitely will not be utilizing them for military use. My initial thoughts, humanoid robots are nothing new, but the announcement of their usage in a factory setting by BMW reflects a significant turning point in how we perceive and integrate such technologies into practical environments. The Figure 01 demo video highlights the robot's fluid, yet notably slow movements. So the Figure AI robot video, if you wanna watch it, they're very fluid, like a human, but noticeably noticeably slow, which is a trade-off for precision and speed. Although the robot does have the ability for continuously working without the need to rest or compensate, which is something to keep in mind. What I notice more, however, based off of this announcement is I can't help but see yet another major partnership with Microsoft. The repeated patterns of AI partnerships with Microsoft demonstrates its expanding influence and might lend credence to Elon Musk's concern in the OpenAI lawsuit. Last but not least, advancement number four, Anthropic launches the Cloud3 family that outperforms GPT-4. On Monday, Anthropic announced the launch of the Claude 3 model family, marking an AI race milestone for the first model to outperform GPT-4 across a spectrum of cognitive tasks. The model family consists of three different sizes, Claude 3 Haiku, Claude 3 Sonnet, and Claude 3 Opus, each tailored to offer a unique balance between intelligence, speed, and cost effectiveness. It's designed to facilitate high-level analytical tasks, nuanced content creation in multiple languages, including Spanish, Japanese, and French, 
cogeneration, and also introduces advanced vision capabilities. Claude 3 marks significant advancements in areas such as biological knowledge, cyber-related expertise, and autonomous capabilities over prior models, but Anthropic continued to adhere to AI safety level two and engage her teamers all during testing. My initial thoughts, while this may just seem like another model announcement, at least you're on top of all of them though because of the AI Almanac, right? Cloud3 Opus really feels stronger compared to GPT-4, which marks a landmark moment for a model to finally surpass OpenAI for now. There have been some reports that it is much slower, but it's important to note that GPT-4 was also slow when it was first released, and I'm sure Anthropic will catch up. More importantly, I find myself particularly impressed by their proactive stance of AI safety regulations in an era largely devoid of any sort of standards. And that's it this week for the AI Almanac. Please like and subscribe. My best friend who is now traveling in Japan sent me the cutest little Japanese. My brain's not working. Souvenir, Japanese souvenir. And he's telling you to please like and subscribe. I haven't named him yet. If you have any names, let me know. Thanks for everything and I'll see you next week.